Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and today I wanted to talk about the most polarizing device that I have seen in a little bit of time. That would be this new MacBook here. This is the Core M processor inside this thing. Now there are a lot of laptops that are coming out or have already come out a little while ago that have this Core M processor inside of it. So what we have here really is nothing new. And what some people might not know is that even though this is stupidly expensive for what you get, it's actually not the most expensive. We've got the Samsung Ative Book 9, which is priced at $1,400. And then we've got this one, which is $1,300. And then you've got the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro, and that is $1,200 or $1,249 if you look at Lenovo's website. So it looks like they are being priced around this point at least the ones that are more fancy or whatever. And I guess this is considered fancy by Apple. Everything by Apple is fancy and shiny. So strangely, what Apple's asking for is really not all that insane. What makes people angry, I think, is the fact that it's only got one port there, USB-C. Now this is quite interesting. We will talk about this port later on, but the other ones have USB ports. I think one of them actually has two USB ports, one on either side. So that's just what makes people angry. And on top of it, we have Apple who has the balls to ask people for $70, no, 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 excuse me, $80 for a dongle adapter thing to be able to plug in a couple of other things that you should be able to just use naturally. Nobody wants to pay an extra almost 100 bucks just to have the vanity of plugging in your own stuff. But after all of that, does that mean that this is a bad device? No, no, it's not. I actually have been using this quite faithfully for a few weeks now, and I like it. I actually do. Now, this doesn't really feel to me like a real MacBook. It kind of feels like an in-between an iPad and also a MacBook. So we'll get into talking about the pointers as to why I like this and some of the downfalls as well. So let's go ahead and check that out a little bit more. So for the spec run through, we've got the 1.1 gigahertz model here. This is the Core M dual core, and it's got a turbo boost of 2.4 gigahertz, although it's not going to stay at that frequency for very long. We've got eight gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM. Now, if this was four gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM, I probably wouldn't have looked at this at all. That would have just been ridiculous. And then we've got Intel HD graphics 5300, which really is not very powerful. And of course, we know that everything that is in here is soldered onto the motherboard, this little chip that's just about yay here. So if you're going to get this device, you have to realize that you need to be happy with it as is. So now let's take a look around this device, just starting with the front. You can probably see right now that it's really full and smudged with fingerprints. Starting with this here, it's just this reflective thing that looks just like it does on the iPhones. They have gotten rid of the one that lights up just for the sake of how thin this is. Now, when we look at the side here, you've got just that single USB-C port. Looking at this side, we've got dual microphones and also a standard headphone jack. You've got nothing on any of the other sides. And if you open it up, and I like that you actually can open this up with just one hand. That's something that a lot of people will ask. So we've got this very full-size keyboard with these butterfly keys, this butterfly mechanism. And I have to say that I don't like this keyboard. I've gotten used to it and I can use it pretty faithfully and I don't have any trouble really typing on it, but it is not my favorite, N not at all. I really like to have keys that press a lot more and feel more substantial. It kind of doesn't feel like you're pressing on anything sometimes and it kind of confuses me once in a while. So maybe I need to get used to it a little bit more, but that just comes with the form factor of how thin this is. So I would say go to an Apple store, play with this, see what you think about that keyboard, because it's one of the strangest keyboards I've ever typed on, and I don't, I don't like it. I'm getting used to it, but I don't like it. What I do like, however, is this trackpad here. I like to bug myself out sometimes by turning it off and then pressing it once it's off because it doesn't click anymore. So it's really fascinating how this taptic type of engine thing they've created works. I think that it feels very nice and precise. And then we've got the stereo speakers right here. Instead of having a CPU fan that takes charge of this area, we've got those really nice stereo front facing speakers. And then we've got that display and I am going to be talking about this display in a little bit. But this is basically how this looks. Snaps closed really nicely. 
So the first question that some would ask me is, why do you like this thing? Why, why, why? And I have to say that simply because of the size, really, this is two pounds. It does feel so, so, so light. And then here we have the iPad Air 2. So you can see just how similar in size that these two look. I've been able to fit this into a backpack and take this around with me everywhere. And it's really opened up a world of opportunity of computing for me because I never carry around my MacBook Pro. It's just too heavy for me. So because of the size and the weight and just how easy this is for me to maneuver, I really like it for that reason. Now, another thing that I really like about this device, a thing that I place pretty high up there, is that this is fanless. Now, this might not matter to a lot of people, but I get really irritated by fan noise. On my current MacBook, I can be doing pretty simple things on it, and that fan will go off, and it just sounds like a jet engine. And sometimes I just want to listen to my Netflix without hearing that fan. I'm sure that's not the same on all the MacBooks or other computers, but I really value that this is just whisper, whisper quiet. Not even whisper quiet, there is no whisper, there's just no sound at all. So one thing that I really like to do is record into GarageBand. I used to try to do that with my Yeti Blue mic via the USB port, and I would hear the fan noise going as I'm singing joyously into my MacBook. Now on this one, I can actually do that, provided I do need to have an adapter, but I can hook up my Yeti Blue Mic microphone to this thing, record into GarageBand, and, and there are no noise disturbances, so I've been really liking that. Now, because this does not have a CPU fan inside of it, it's also not a very powerful device, and because it's not a very powerful device, it's not getting incredibly hot. So I am very much happy with that. This does feel like a laptop I can actually afford to keep on my lap and not burn my legs. For the men's out there, you might like this for your other bits. It's nice to have a computer that doesn't get blisteringly hot. It can get a little toasty, but it's not bad at all. Another thing that I have really liked about this little computer here is this display. This is a 12 inch display. It's 226 pixels per inch and it looks really, really nice. IPS display. So I went into the Apple store because I was curious to see what is really the difference between the MacBook Air and the size and the weight, the new MacBook Air. And I just took one look at the display on the new MacBook Air and was like, nope, I won't even dare touch that. There is no excuse for this display to not be on the MacBook Air. So just general advice I would have for people is that if you don't wanna go for a first generation, just wait till next year, check out Apple's next offerings or whatever else on the market. I think that next year Apple will probably put this Retina display on the MacBook Air, or who knows, they might put MacBook Air and this thing together and just become whatever MacBook is. But yes, this display is pretty fantastic. I have to say that it is not accurately calibrated out of the box, and for most people, that's really not gonna matter. No one will give two cares about how this is calibrated because it does look really nice out of the box. I can say that the gamma is a bit too high and also the white point isn't accurate. And I can see that they are compressing shadows, so they're trying to get shadows to be darker earlier, if you will, so it makes the scene look more dark, more contrasty. And unfortunately, that doesn't work very well when you're trying to edit video. And you need to see everything accurately that you recorded on the camera on the display. But of course, what's really nice is that I could create a profile myself, a calibration profile, and just load it on the display. I have it on here now. And so now I can edit videos and whatnot, and everything looks accurate. So I've been very happy with this nice retina display. It does get decently bright as well, so really no complaints here. So these past two years, I've been doing a lot of traveling, going to press events, and I've been carrying around my huge MacBook Air, and that's been taking a toll on me. So I've really been looking for something that is quite mobile that I can just type some documents on. But then I came to the problem that I really wanted to have something that was super, super mobile that I could maybe even edit stuff on, maybe even do some Photoshop stuff on. I really like the iPad here. There's a lot of really nice offerings and applications, but it just doesn't have a strong enough operating system to do what I needed it to do. So I was quite happy to see that Apple had some type of offering here with this new MacBook. I have been able to edit photos within Photoshop and I have been able to edit video as well with no problem. I'm actually going to be editing this video right here on Final Cut X. I've also been able to load Adobe Premiere on this thing and edit without any problem. The one thing that I can see is that once you try to render the video, once you try to 
create it into a movie file, then that's what can take quite a bit of time. It can go quite slowly in comparison to, of course, a more powerful laptop. But I'm not intending to create hour-long videos on this machine. This is probably the longest video that I'm going to make on this machine. If I go to press events, I can easily import video on here and edit it, kind of like a five, maybe 10 minute video, and it won't be any problem whatsoever. This can do all of that, and this can do all of that quite well. Now I edit in 1080p, 60p video, and I see people are doing 4K. I just like to have 1080p, 60p for now. And I can see that it does stutter with 4K video, but with 1080p video, I don't see any frame drops that I can really tell at all when I'm editing video. So it just is a really nice experience. The only thing that I notice is that it does take quite a bit of time to render videos at that very end. So media capabilities on this device are feasible and at some points are even great. You've got that really nice display. You can even edit video and also photos. And of course, you've also got these stereo speakers here, which get really, really loud. I've been really surprised at how great the quality is on here. I've been playing around with the Asus Transformer Book Qi T300, which has got the same Core M processor inside of this. And I love that computer except for it has the worst speakers possible. So when I had a chance to check this one out, this just has speakers that blew me away for just such a tiny, tiny device. So this is a great overall media machine. Great overall media machine in a very, very compact size. Another thing that I have been really liking about this device is the build quality and some of the Apple-y touches. I don't want to say that I'm conforming to the ooh shiny complex of Apple, but this does look quite nice. I do like that you have an option to choose between space gray, the silver, or the gold. The space gray one does look quite sleek. So the overall build quality has been excellent on this machine. One thing that I want to mention though is about the hinge on this thing. And I asked several people on Twitter and on Google Plus if they've been hearing this creaking that mine has. Sometimes mine will creak, and then I've had a couple of days where it wasn't creaking at all, just on that hinge, making a popping, creaking sound. And now I can get it to do it a little bit, and I do want to exchange it because it's doing that. I should never have to settle for something that pops or clicks, especially at this price point. So pay attention to see if yours pops or clicks. Other people did not notice what I'm talking about, and then one person did say that he hears the clicking too, so I think that's just going to depend. It's a bit unfortunate. I'm not sure what it is that's causing it to click. Now, as for battery life, I've come to appreciate that Apple does seem to know what they're talking about when they make battery life estimates. They say it's about nine hours 10 hours for web browsing, and I've been getting about that. Now, if you're going to be using it for more intense things, then it's not going to last as long, but I've been playing around with the Transformer Book Qi, and in comparison, the battery life is so much better than what I've seen on the Transformer Book Qi. So I think that for what this is, and for how small it is, and for what they can fit in there, that this does have pretty solid battery life. And what's also really nice, is that with that USB-C port down there at the bottom, you can take an external battery pack and plug it in here. Now I know it's not going to charge it very fast at all, but if it's off, it can charge it just a little bit. And at least with an external battery pack, you can have some juice to keep it running if the thing does happen to be heading down the creek when you're out and about and don't have a chance to charge it. So that USB-C port does offer you some extra options so getting to its downsides, and of course I have to agree that it has just that one port, and of course I've got some adapters that I'm able to plug into it. I refuse to pay $80 for Apple's adapter, and it's on back order anyway, so I've just been kind of trying to get adapters off of Amazon for now to see what I can do. I don't have the best setup, but since this thing is so light, I can afford to throw a couple of dongles inside of a pocket, just say that... If I put this in a case, I can put those dongles in a pocket, and I'm not so worried about it at that point. So it's not for everyone. It's a bit of a frustration. The biggest concern that I have here is that we have a single port that's going to be having all the abuse. This is not a magnet-safe port anymore, so I'm afraid that it can become easily damaged, broken. Not only do you have to pull something in and out to charge it, but anytime you want to use an adapter or anything else with this computer, you're going to be pulling things in and out of it all the time, and I get worried that it's going to wear out, or get damaged, or scratched, or just something. They really should have at least had one more of these things on here. 
Now, of course, the largest disadvantage of this machine is going to be the Core M processor inside of it and the really low end graphics. It doesn't do very great on the benchmarks end and that's something to be expected. Remember that this is a fanless device, but this is going to be able to do a lot of your daily tasks. You can edit video, you can use Photoshop and it works really quite well. All of them work really quite well. The one thing that I see that you really don't want to do on this device or really can't do is a lot of gaming. Some people will try to play some lower end type titles, but otherwise forget about it. You're going to have really low frame rates. This device is really not intended for that. I am certainly not someone who is a gamer. If I do play games, I'm just loading an emulator of N64 or even SNES on my computer and playing that. I like the classics. So I'm never running into a problem where I'm not having enough frame rates for games. But if you're a gamer, please keep that in mind. You're able to do some very light gaming with this computer, but really not much else. So what you essentially have here is a machine that's kind of like an iPad. It's got a mobile processor inside of this thing, and it's got a computer OS inside of it. So it really plays like a tablet with a more advanced operating system. So realize that at this price point of $1,300, you're essentially getting a tablet that has a better operating system and the perks of having some tablet-esque type features. Now this is not for everyone because of that price range. Maybe you'll be better off getting a MacBook Air or just something non apple entirely. But for someone like myself who needs it just for basic video editing, who needs it for some Photoshop, and for everything else, such as media consumption, Netflix, Word documents, web browsing, this has been absolutely perfect and a real treat for me. I can carry this around everywhere, put it in a very small backpack. I never know it's there. So the entire package and all the good features I've mentioned for you have happened to be a really good combination for myself and have made it a machine that I actually will enjoy using it over this next year, especially when I go out of the country. So this is really all I wanted to say about my experience with this for right now. Please let me know what you think about this device. A lot of people think that it's completely annoying and stupid, but if you want something that has no fan noise, that has a really slim form factor, that doesn't get really hot, and can do basic computing, I would say that I like it. It works for me. Sure, I could go out and get a little netbook, a cheap little netbook, but those probably aren't going to handle my editing very well, and they have very low specs, low RAM. At least this has eight gigabytes of RAM inside of it. So it's expensive, but when you compare it to the other Core M models, the top end ones, it's about the same expense, except for they've taken away the port ability. So it turns out to be ridiculous, but in the scheme of things and in the rest of the market, it's not that ridiculous. It just depends on if you want to pay for this thing or not and how angry you are at not having that port. So again, let me know what you think. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Cute little MacBook, not for everybody. Really not a full computer. It's really a tablet mix. So let me know what you think. Goodbye.